Toronto is a crazy place. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you are well. As the title tells, today we're doing a few story times, not all, because I got a lot, but we're doing a few story times about racism in the six. You would think for a city that's super multicultural, we seem to have it all together. Mm -mm. Let me tell you, we don't. The only difference between Canadians and Americans, in my opinion, are Americans show you their face. Canadians smile and say that they're beyond these things but they really ain't and i think that's actually worse let me know down below if you agree but i'd rather know who you are than you think that you're holier than thou but you operate the same way especially when there's a little liquor in your tank so let's get into these stories i'll probably share about three or five if you want a part two let me know down below and let's go where should we begin Take it back. A couple years ago, I used to work at a couple restaurants on this street, this strip called King West. In Toronto, it's the equivalent of the entertainment district or like the Vegas Strip or whatever. It's this part of the city where everything goes down. There's dining, there's parties, clubs, lounges, whatever. I worked at two different restaurants and the perfect thing about working in these positions is by the time I got off, that's usually when the parties popped off. So if my friends were partying in the neighborhood for a birthday or a get together or whatever, I was always good to go because I was already dressed for the occasion and I was already in the neighborhood. So this particular night, one of my girls was celebrating her birthday at, I don't want to say, it's not Belfast Love, it's the one next to Belfast. Because I was always going after my shift, I usually stand in line solo. So all the girls were already in, I was the last one and I was just texting them. I can't remember if I was listening to some music or if I was just texting and just taking in all the lit people because it's so funny watching drunk people when you're sober. It makes you wonder, am I like that? I hope not. So I'm standing in line and mind you, this is way before pandemic times. So social distancing wasn't a thing, but I still wasn't up under them like that. I was probably about more than arm's width away because that's just how I do things. I don't like to be too close to anyone. I just... My personal space, your personal space. Three blonde chicks are in front of me. One of them fixed themselves to turn around to say, I don't know why she's so close to us. These N-words think they can get into these places. She's not even pretty. I just, I didn't even react. I initially just write it off as being unwell because you have to be unwell in the 21st century to fix yourself to say that to somebody. I just pretended like I couldn't hear, which angered the three girls more because obviously they're saying this to get a reaction out of me. So I'm not giving you what you want. A, you want me to pop off so you can say I'm the angry black chick. B, you want me to pop off because obviously that's the energy that you gave. And C, I'm not an N-word. Last time I checked, no N-words here. I'm a black female. I'm not an N-word. I might be legally blind, but you're the one who needs to get your vision checked. I thought about telling the bouncer when we got to the front, but I'm just like, what is he gonna do? Tell them they can't go in. I passed by them. They all gave me dirty looks. Back then I had enough vision to take that in. And I thought, why are you so pressed though? When I found my friends, I told them what happened. Then, oh my gosh, da 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 da. I'm like, this is normal. This is why I don't like going to these places. If you watch my work story times, you already know about the time a customer at Zara called me the N-word because her pants didn't fit. But I didn't tell you about the time that I was working at the restaurant and someone fixed themselves to call me the N-word. They came in, they messed up all the promotional stuff on the top of the desk, which was already a dead giveaway that they weren't okay. And then they fumbled and said something under their breath and N-words, work in the front here. You don't belong in this neighborhood. And the outburst just gave, you're not okay. You're just... I'm not engaging with you. My manager, who was all the way at the back of the restaurant, saw the commotion but couldn't hear. So when she came up and saw me fixing all the stuff that was on the floor now, she asked what happened. And I said, oh, she's not well. And she called me the N-word. She's white, so she was losing it. Like, oh my gosh, she called you N-word. Why don't you tell me how to cuss her off? Da -da -da -da. I'm like, obviously she's not okay. There's no point in someone who's well cussing off an unwell person. Isn't there a saying for that? Like, don't fight with crazy because people seeing won't be able to tell the difference. Something of that effect, I don't know. Of course, the saying sounds better than that. I was more confused that she was upset that I was working at the front. Like, did, would you rather me work at the back? Like, what was that comment about? Personally, for me, these next two stories are the saddest. The way I see it is when you become an educator, it is your purpose to instill and influence students in a positive way. So in both of these stories, I feel like they really missed the mark. One was in high school, must have been grade 10. My high school started from grade 10. And I remember this math teacher 
who for whatever reason decided it was okay to eat oranges before he tutored us. Ugh, the breath though, that breath though. Garlic and oranges. I said, what kind of torture is this? I remember one time he was like, I don't even know why you're bothering taking this course. He was always urging all of the black kids to do applied, which in Canada is the equivalent of taking college driven courses. But I already knew from grade 10, I wanted to go to uni. So I was taking academic. I've never been good at math, I can't lie, so I was struggling bad. But my best friend at the time, who wasn't black, was doing just as bad as me, and he didn't have the same smoker energy. The things he would say to me, and I would tell her, she's like, what? Because he would take the time to nurture and tutor her and work through things. And if I asked for help, it was this whole hoopla of I was an inconvenience to him. And I remember one time he was just like, yeah, you're people. I don't even know why you bother trying. Like, you shouldn't even take math at all. You won't amount to anything. I said, my people. I don't know why I didn't report these things. I was such a shy, timid child that I just, Ugh. but like that is not okay. And it doesn't get better because when I went to university, this was third year, there was this teacher. She already didn't like me. And because she didn't like me, to be honest, I didn't like her. To the point where I remember I would wake up at 4 a.m. to get to class by eight, because I lived far away that year. And I fell asleep one day in class and she was livid. But even before this time, before I fell asleep and I was sitting at the front of class, so I was trying to pay attention, but my eyes were sandbags, okay? Even before that time, I remember I submitted a paper. I don't remember what the course was, but it was my core program. And she's actually the director of the program now. Funny how life works out. I submitted this paper. I thought I did well. I've always been good at writing. One thing I can say is my mom always like gave me books for Christmas and my birthday. So I'm very well-spoken and well-written. I'd even say I'm better at writing than I am at speaking. So when I get my paper back, flunk. And I'm confused. I know where my strengths and weaknesses are and I know I wrote a good paper. So I actually asked her like, what did I do wrong? How can I improve? I came humble and respectful because I was literally in a state of shock. I have never gotten less than an A minus on a paper in university. And I think my marks were even better in high school when it came to writing. So this woman fixed herself to say to me, I don't even know how you graduated high school. Your writing is atrocious. People like you shouldn't even bother being in programs like this. Again, the whole people like you. Nutrition and food science is a predominantly woman-dominated industry, so she can't be talking about me being a woman, seeing as she's a woman too. I brought that up to a couple classmates. They read my paper and they said, your paper is actually better than mine. And I'm like, oh, why, thank you. I didn't, I didn't want to get the compliment. I just wanted to know, is it really worth a D? You had more points in there that proved what the point was than I did. And I got an A or I got a B or whatever. And then I spoke to another friend and they're like, she's Brazilian. And in Brazil, they have a huge like colorism caste system type of thing. I said, I mean, the whole those people thing now makes sense, but still. And I didn't know back then that the deans were there for situations like these. I should have reported her, especially now that I know what position she's in. But I hope that no other students are suffering because of her <sighs> discrimination. We'll wrap it up with this last story. It's not my first experience with racism, but it's one of my earlier ones. So if you want a part two, I can talk to you about how these kids in these playgrounds in Toronto <sighs> Kids are evil creatures, all I'm gonna say. In this last tale, I'm on the subway. I must have been between 10 and 13. You know that tween year where you're trying to be yourself and trying to be grown, but you're really not? So I think I wanna be all cool listening to my CD, okay? Remember when CD players came? Oh my God, CD players and then MP3s and iPods, look at life. Listening to whatever is in my CD player. My mom and my brother get up to get off at Bloor and Young Station. I think I want to be so mature just getting out of a different door out of the same cabin. Why is it that when I'm getting out, a lady comes in? Okay, maybe she doesn't wind her bag up, but she does butt me on the other side of the head. Oh, I can still feel the pain now two decades later. Honestly, guys, I was so shocked and my mom didn't see what happened. So I ran up to her after and I was holding my hand and she's like, what's wrong with you? And I explained, she's like, serve you right. I'm like, serve me right for going through the wrong door. Caribbean moms, I tell you. Anyway, I was just so shocked because it wasn't just her hitting me upside the head for no reason. It was her yelling effing N words, always on the TTC, taking up the space. And in my little brain, I was thinking, wait, 
because obviously I'm thinking she means black people. Nowadays, when someone says the N-word, I don't sub it out for black people because black people are not N-words. That's just me, that's how I think. As a kid, I'm like, so are there too many black people on the subway? Did I go at the wrong door? Are we on the subway at the wrong time? Like I was so perplexed and so confused and my head was pounding me. I wish that I could say that after that moment, I never experienced racism again, but unfortunately the other four stories I shared before came after that incident. So let's knock on wood that after this panorama is done and the world opens fully, that I never experienced anything wild or weird like that again. Cause it's, it's, we're in the 21st century. Humanity really needs to know and learn how to bind together and build and do better. Like everything else is nonsense. I'm gonna wrap it up on that note. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I don't even know if it's like a laughing type video because you're laughing at my misery, but hey, if I can make you laugh, <sighs> laughing is better than crying. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. If you did, you know what to do. Tap the like, subscribe and share. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later. Oh my gosh, guys. If I do a part two, remind me to tell you about how racist the men here are because it is next level disturbing.